are a month into the 2023 college football season, which makes this the perfect time to check on the 2024 rookie class. I'm going to go through 24 prospects to watch over my two round Superflex PPR, no tight end premium rookie mock draft and stay around to the end because I'm going to throw some bonus guys to watch that I expect will show up in my next DLF mock draft. Starting here at 101 is going to be quarterback Caleb Williams. Let's keep it light. Let's keep it breezy here. Let's not overthink this. Caleb Williams is a dual threat quarterback. He has lit it up early on in the season. Everything we thought about him heading into the 2023 season has been absolutely confirmed, and he is still on track to be the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft, which means he's on track to be the 101 in all Superflex rookie drafts next year. Coming in here at 102 is going to be Drake May. Now, this is a switch up for my first DLF mock draft, and I'm switching it up here to reflect what I think consensus is. I believe consensus does want to take Drake May as that 102 here, prioritize the quarterback position in super flex formats, which I completely understand. I do want to mention, though, with this Drake May selection, I have a little bit of reservation. Drake may have struggled with his decision-making and processing early on in the 2023 college football season. He has four touchdowns to four interceptions. That's a lot less touchdowns in a lot more interceptions than we're used to here over that sample size for Drake may. I expect that he'll get back on track with his new offensive coordinator and I'll feel a lot better about taking him at one Oh two a month from now, but It has to be said, it feels a little risky at this point in time. If I was doing a rookie draft right now, I would take Marvin Harrison Jr. with my 102 selection, but because I took Drake May 102, I'll go ahead and be happy to take Harrison Jr. with the 103. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a great boundary presence. He's shown early on in the season that he can have a great release off the line of scrimmage. Once he beats you with that first step, his speed is to the level that that defensive back will not catch up to him. And he, of course, pairs that with good size 6'3". Uh, so he has the height and vertical ability to pair with that athleticism and size. All all the indications from NFL draft circles is that Marvin Harrison Jr. is on track to be a top five NFL draft selection. That's Jamar Chase type draft capital. And quite frankly, it's just not the type of draft capital we often see at the wide receiver position. So it's wheels up here for Marvin Harrison Jr. And at 104, despite the fact that this is not a tight end premium rookie mock draft, I'm going to go with Brock Bowers out of Georgia. Now, Brock Bowers is what has what I would call insulated value here because early on in the season, Mike Bobo, the new offensive coordinator at Georgia, he hasn't really gotten things going with the Bulldogs offense. And that includes Brock Bowers. He's, he's relatively underperforming compared to the stats and the highlights that we expect him to put up. Nonetheless, we have great tape from Brock Bowers. We have great size. We have great athleticism for his position. And I still expect he'll be a top 10 to top 15 NFL draft prospect. So even without a tight end premium in this format, I'm still taking him at 104. In all formats, Brock Bowers should be a top five rookie selection in your 2024 rookie drafts. Now, coming in at 105, This is when the tier really breaks open. Those top four guys seem to be in a conversation of their own. And now we can really kind of go in a lot of different directions. But I'm going to go with Malik Neighbors here at 105. The wide receiver out of LSU was my wide receiver too heading into the season. And although I've certainly been impressed with other wide receivers in this class, I'm going to hold out with Neighbors as my wide receiver too at this point in time. Neighbors is athletic. He's twitchy. He works well before and after the catch. And he's coming off of a big week three performance where he put up over 200 yards. Wide receiver Keon Coleman stole the spotlight in that early season matchup. But Malik Neighbors was really good against Florida State as well. So he's proved it against some tough early season competition. Speaking of Keon Coleman, though, at 106, he's the next guy to come off the board. And if you remember from my last DLF mock draft, I took Keon Coleman at 207. I just wanted to make sure I said his name so that he could get on your radar. 
I was excited about him, but my goodness, I was not this excited about him. He jumps over a full round in this mock draft here coming in at 106, and it's because we've seen his size now paired along that Florida State boundary. He hit the ground running. He shows that deep playability, but he shows the ability to separate consistently. He shows the ability to go up and win those contested catch situations, and certainly him loading up the box score, including three touchdowns against LSU. It's not going to hurt his draft stock one bit. Now, coming in here at 107 is going to be running back Travion Henderson out of Ohio State. Now, the running back position overall, over the first month of the college football season, it's down. We came in with a strong top tier of guys. We weren't sure who was going to claim that top spot. And as far as I'm concerned, there still isn't anybody who has claimed that top spot, but Running back Travion Henderson has shown some flashes. We've seen on tape here uh, some good explosiveness. We've seen examples of good vision. And he's been a steady producer, although he hasn't had that blow-up marquee game yet. I am hoping we get there. But what I'm really hoping is when we check in here on our next rookie mock draft, I just hope we feel more confident in who the running back one is. Coming in here at 108 is Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers, the quarterback out of Texas, is a big riser from the first month of the college football season. You'll recall that Ewers is a five-star recruit. He had a lot of hype and pedigree around him. When he first started at Ohio State, then transferred to Texas, he had pops and flashes of success last year, but it was up to him this year to solidify that. And over the course of the first month of the season, he has solidified his projection here of being a first-round NFL draft pick. Now, I don't think he goes as high as Caleb Williams and maybe not even as high as Drake May, but I absolutely could see him going in that 10 to 20 range if the NFL draft happened today. Here's the bonus, right? With Quinn Ewers, huge performance against a tough, tough Alabama defense. That Alabama defense is littered with future NFL defenders, right? And Quinn Ewers showed up on the big stage, zero interceptions, three touchdowns, distributed the ball around the field. And what I loved about it is he showed his ability to adjust his, his arm talent in the sense of like being able to adjust velocity, being able to lead his receivers around the field with good anticipation. So that arm talent is absolutely on display this season. And for me, the big, big kicker is that Quinn Ewers has already put his best tape of the season on film. He solidified it, right? And the reason I say that is because Texas, even if they win out, win the Big 12 championship, maybe if they get to the college football playoff, they're probably not going to play a better defense all year. So no matter what Quinn Ewers does for the rest of the season, NFL front offices and NFL GMs are going to go back to the Alabama tape and they will convince themselves that what they see on tape, they can replicate in their offense. And Quinn Ewers will then in turn be a highly drafted quarterback. All right, here coming in at 109, we're going back to the running back position and we're going with Braylon Allen, the running back out of Wisconsin. Here's the bottom line here, folks. Braylon Allen, he's still got the size that we want to see. 6'2", 240. He carries it well. He has good vision in between the tackles. He's been steadily productive. I don't know that Braylon Allen is going to be the guy, especially in this, uh, quote, new look Wisconsin offense, which hasn't really panned out in the way that I hoped. I don't know that he's going to be the guy that's going to have these huge monster weeks, but I do think he's the guy that when you put him under the microscope and when people really take the time to do the film study, they're going to consistently find themselves appreciating Braylon Allen and the full work of film, the full body of tape that they're going to have over three really productive seasons for the Wisconsin Badger. All right, 110. You know what? I said Keon Coleman was the biggest riser over the course of this last month. But I got to say, Shador Sanders, he wasn't even in the first rookie mock draft. And folks, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't have put him in a four-round rookie mock draft before the season started. But now I've got to correct. Because NFL draft circles are absolutely considering Shador Sanders to be a projected first-round pick. And I see why. You watch him over the first month of the college football season, you're going to see a player that looks poised. He has great processing, great decision-making, and he is doing it in the face of a lot of defensive pressure. That Colorado offensive line is not holding up around him, 
But Shador Sanders has shown the ability to step up, be a playmaker, be creative with his arm angles, be creative with his ability to distribute around the field. And although he doesn't look to run, he does have enough mobility and athleticism to extend plays and be a factor for fantasy football purposes. So Shador Sanders coming in at 110, biggest riser from the last mock draft. Coming in here at 111 is Raheem Sanders. Now I'm hanging on to Raheem Sanders here in the first round because I think he's got the pure talent to be a potential running back one in this class, but he struggled with injury early on in the season. It didn't feel right for me to totally dock him based on that because it's not that he isn't performing. It's that he hasn't been able to be healthy and on the field. So Raheem Sanders, we're going to keep him in the first round here at 111. And coming in here at 112 is wide receiver Xavier Worthy for the Texas Longhorns. We've seen Worthy's explosiveness on full display. We've seen his ability to separate with speed he is an absolute track star and the big display of that right was going back to that Alabama game Quinn Ewers throws up that moonshot gives it a ton of air underneath it because he knows his guy Xavier Worthy is going to outrun that Alabama defensive back Xavier Worthy might not be a consensus 112 at this point in time but I think that he's going to be somebody who ends up going in the first rounds by the time April comes around. All right, round two here, 201, J.J. McCarthy. I got to be honest, I would have taken J.J. McCarthy above Shador Sanders, but I don't think that's consensus, and I want to make sure to reflect proper consensus for you in these mock drafts. Over the first two weeks of the college football season, J.J. McCarthy showed absolutely everything I wanted to see for him, and he was already my preseason quarterback three. I love J.J. McCarthy's mechanics. They're crisper and they're cleaner. He's always had a clean platform, but it's a really smooth release now. Uh, he has looked really good uh, sitting in the pocket. He's got a great pocket presence above him. And most importantly, the velocity is up. He's got some real pop in that ball now. It's helping him stretch the field further. Now, he did have a rough week three against Bowling Green of all teams. But as we get into Big Ten play, if J.J. McCarthy is consistently producing, then he's going to be somebody who is consistently rising up NFL draft consensus. At 202, here is running back Devin Neal. Yes, I'm a huge fan of running back Devin Neal. Uh, if you follow my work over at patreon.com slash rookie big board, you would have been in on Devin Neal preseason at a pretty significant level. You know, he was my biggest riser candidate coming into the year, and he has absolutely shredded opposing defenses, putting up huge weeks at an ultra efficient level over the first uh, weeks of the college football season. So Devin Neal might not be in your top tier of running back vernacular at this point in time, but I got to tell you folks, if you don't get on now, you're going to miss the train. 203 here is Troy Franklin, wide receiver out of Oregon. I cannot wait. I cannot wait until folks start watching Oregon consistently on national television. And I think they're going to do it a lot because I think Oregon's going to make it to the Pac-12 championship. If they win that, they're going to make it to the college football playoff. And then Troy Franklin's stock is going to absolutely skyrocket. He separates really well along the boundary. He's very comfortable working over the middle of the field. He's got sticky hands. He takes the top off the defense with his speed. He has excellent ball tracking ability. And Troy Franklin, to me, he's going to be a little undersized, but he does come in at 6'3", about 180. Man, I, I hate to slap the comp on somebody, but I see a lot of Devonta Smith in his play style. It, it's really exciting to watch, and I would be shocked if he was going any lower than 203 in your rookie drafts come May. Now, a little bit of a slight here at 204. I am going to go with Amika Egbuka. I wouldn't be shocked if he's going higher than this in actual rookie drafts moving up, but I think it's worth pointing out he has looked underwhelming over the start of the college football season for the Buckeyes. Now, the Ohio State offense overall has been a little underwhelming, but my concern with Ibuka watching his preseason tape was that he was just going to be an underneath guy. He wasn't going to be able to stretch the field, take the top off of defense. He wasn't showing too much diversity in his round tree. And at this point in time, I just haven't seen it. So I can't keep him you know, up in the first round just based on the fact he's an Ohio State wide receiver. 
We need to be able to adjust and pivot. And so for that reason, Amika Igbuka, he's sliding down the board a little bit here at 204. Coming in at 205 is running back Blake Corum out of Michigan. Blake Corum, we were worried about the injury that ended his 2022 college football season, but he's looked healthy. He's hit the ground running. He's been ultra productive and most telling, he's gotten the bulk of the workload here for the Michigan Wolverines. I do think he's probably going to be more of that day two, day three borderline NFL draft capital. But I can tell you, Blake Corum stands, they're out there. And when they when we get to tape season, people start watching highlights. Folks are going to get really excited about Blake Corum. And they're not going to let him fall too far in rookie drafts. Coming in here at 206 is wide receiver Roma Dunze out of the University of Washington. Roma Dunze shows the ability to win before and after the catch. He separates well underneath. He flashes good hands. And he shows the ability to rack up yards after the catch. The Washington offense is firing on all cylinders which is racking up some really nice tape here from Roma Dunze. At 206, he's coming in here a little bit below consensus, but I think it just reflects how strong the wide receiver class is shaping up to be. 207, second and last tight end to come off the board is Jatavion Sanders out of Texas. Sanders is an athletic pass-catching tight end here. If we were doing a three- or four-round rookie mock draft, I would end up getting into three, four, maybe even five tight ends. But in a two-round mock draft, Jatavian Sanders is really the only guy you need to know at this point in time other than Brock Bowers in terms of a guy who can legitimately end up with 50, 60 targets early on in his NFL career. All right, here at 208, this one hurts, but I had to bump down Donovan Edwards. I had high, high expectations for Donovan Edwards heading into the season. And I don't know if it's the fact that Harbaugh hasn't been coaching Michigan early on in the season or if there's an injury or what's going on here with Donovan Edwards, but he hasn't been getting as many touches as Blake Corum. And when he's on the field, he hasn't looked as efficient. Now he does still flash here as a pass catcher. And that's always been his fantasy football upside. And I'm absolutely still considering him as one of the top running backs to watch. And I'm hoping and expecting that he's a riser here over the next couple months. But based on what I've seen early, even though he's my guy, we got to drop Donovan Edwards. 209 here is, is running back Will Shipley here from Clemson. Will Shipley, I just don't know that he's going to be the guy that ends up in that top tier conversation for the running backs. But he is the type of guy where if he falls to the third round of rookie drafts, I'll be scooping him up consistently. I don't think he will because I think he'll sneak into the back end of day two. Shipley is a great PPR type projection. He's an excellent pass catcher. I like his ability to work off tackle as well. He shows explosive ability with the ball in his hands and he's got really nice field vision. Coming in here at 210 is Bo Nix. Yes, this is a super flex rookie mock draft. So I need to talk a little bit more quarterbacks. Now there's a legitimate chance we end up with five first round quarterbacks. And then I would expect Bo Nix to be another top 50, top 75 potential quarterback. So six quarterbacks in total could have really high draft capital, which will very much shake up the fantasy football landscape. Bo Nix in particular has done a great job with his mental processing and decision-making early on in the season. He's shown his ability to throw a pretty deep ball. He leads his receivers around the field with anticipation, and he's looked in command of that Oregon offense from the pocket. He's the type of experienced leader that NFL front offices and GMs are going to absolutely crave. He's had a little bit of a rocky road for those of us who have been following him over his full college career, but he's going to finish that career likely as a Heisman finalist with a lot of momentum behind him for the 2024 NFL draft. Coming in at 211 is Jimmy Horn Jr., the wide receiver from Colorado. Another new name here in this mock draft. Now, the Colorado offense overall has looked really exciting, and there's been a lot of talk justifiably for Travis Hunter, a lot of talk justifiably for the freshman Dylan Edwards. But I don't think Jimmy Horn Jr. is getting enough credit. Now, he is a slot guy, and that for me is sneaky good value because he's not an undersized slot guy. He's the perfect type of NFL slot right now that we want to see for fantasy football, and that can be very valuable. Horn Jr. separates well off the line of scrimmage. He's a quick in short area type runner. When he's got the ball in his hands, he's able to work after the catch, 
The question will be touchdown upside, you know, similar to the type of conversation we were having maybe with Josh Downs last year in terms of touchdown upside. But Jimmy Horn Jr. is absolutely somebody that needs to be on your radar. And then coming in here at 212, the last pick in this two round super flex rookie PPR, no tight end premium mock draft quarterback. Michael Penix out of Washington. And this one, I really just snuck him into this mock draft because I want to talk about him. Michael Penix Jr. has been lighting up the box score over the first couple uh, weeks of the college football season. He's looked in command of that offense. He's pushed the ball deep. And if you were just looking at the numbers, you justifiably would be very excited about him. But I want to make two points. Although he has a high completion percentage, I don't think his accuracy is as good as people may think it is. Uh, Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, uh, Ja'Kai Polk, they're doing a lot of that work there for him. And I'm not saying they're doing all of the work, but uh, I don't know that his accuracy is at the elite level that his completion percentage would suggest. And the other more important factor with Michael Penix Jr., you have to keep in mind here, if you're playing in Devi, you're trying to acquire him early, you just want to hitch your wagon to him now, the injuries, folks, they're real. Two knee injuries over his college career. Multiple upper body injuries over his college career. He is going to be off some team's NFL boards totally when it comes to the draft. He's not going to pass medicals unless I'm completely misunderstanding his medical history, which is possible. Like I'm not a doctor. I don't have that inside information, but I know the surgeries that he's had, and I think it's going to be red flags across the board. So when it's time to do your actual rookie draft, I don't know that Michael Penix Jr. will even be in the second round, but I think if the drafts happen today, he would be, and that's why I wanted to go ahead and talk about him. I want to finish up this episode here with a quick shout-out for some risers over the, the course of the first month of the college football season. They haven't elevated to the point where I felt like they were worth getting into this two-round mock draft, but if they were in a three-round mock draft, they absolutely would have been included. That's starting with wide receiver Jamari Thrash out of Louisville. He's a Georgia State transfer here that's hit the ground running and has come in as an immediate X for the Cardinals. He is fast. He works really well uh, moving downfield. He has great hands. He's very comfortable working in traffic. He's got good contested catchability despite the fact that he's not a super large size. I think he ends up bumping into the slot at the NFL level and being really effective doing it. Wide receiver Roman Wilson is fast. He is fast, fast, and he's shown the ability to flash some really good hands over the first uh, few games here for the Michigan Wolverines. So with that being said, you have good hands. You're fast. He's going to be on that path for the Senior Bowl. He's going to be that Senior Bowl hype guy, I could tell you already. He's going to end up being a top 100 draft pick. You're definitely going to want to make sure that you know Roman Wilson's name. The other wide receiver here that I want to mention is A.D. or Adani Mitchell for Texas. You know, he's going to be a tough evaluation. He's got great athletic profile, and he's not going to be somebody that has super high stats, but he is going to be somebody where if you – you know, mash together his full highlight reel, then he's going to shape up with a lot of the other wide receivers in the class. So I don't know if he's a day two or a day three guy right now, but I do know that he's a guy that you need to have on your radar. The last guy that I want to mention here is running back Audric Estime. Estime is averaging over eight yards a carry at nearly 100 carries so far, far for the Fighting Irish. He's a powerful back. He's got good size. I think he's going to be a day three back. Like he's not the type of guy who's going to go to Indianapolis and show out, but he's that type of day three running back who's going to fall in draft capital round five, round six, but he's going to show up on an NFL team. He's going to get his chance and he's going to absolutely eat. So Audric Estime is somebody who I will be hyper targeting in the third round of rookie drafts. I could tell you that already. All right, so there you have it. 24 prospects to watch plus four bonus prospects in this rookie mock draft. Definitely leave a comment. Let me know who I snubbed, who I left off. I want to chat it up with you. And if you want to catch more of my work, head on over to patreon.com slash rookie big board to get full access to all my rookie reports, my rookie rankings, Devi rankings, dynasty rankings, all the good stuff.